Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to another edition of Intuitive Heart Healing Podcast. My name is Valerie McLaughlin and I'm your host for this podcast. I created this podcast because I wanted to bring healing stories to you, give you tools, tips, and share a little bit about my journey to help you along your healing journey and to do so with love. Today I'm going to talk about um, I'm going to talk a little bit about body intelligence, body wisdom, um, intuitively listening to your body, whatever you want to call it. One of those, all of them, something else along the lines. But I wanted to do this because I had uh, recently had an incident where I recognized and became aware of something within myself. And I was like, you know what? This is really a great topic to talk about and, and talk about the wisdom that our body holds. Um, and then just to get clarification on it, I was with a client and we were talking and talking about listening to their, their body. And, and I'm like, what is your body telling you? And it just kind of came up again. And then somebody else reached out to me that I work with and was like, oh my God, um, you know, I've been going through stuff and I, I, be, I feel like I've been making myself sick. So I kind of want to talk about all these topics in the body wisdom, body intelligence, intuitive listening to your body, whatever you're going to call it. Um, I'm probably just going to interchange them throughout and just know that when I'm talking, I'm talking about all those things. To me, they all sort of mean the same thing. So our bodies are amazing. So we have we have our human body, the, the skin that we're in, our physical body. Okay, we're talking about our physical body today. That is what you can see. Um, if you've heard me speak before, and listen to maybe some of my podcasts, you know that we have an emotional body, a spiritual body, energetic body, and I've talked about those as well. Today, we're going to actually just focus on our physical body because our physical body tells us so much about ourselves. It, it is an, another way for us to tap in and use our intuition and use the wisdom that is stored within our bodies to help guide us along the way. So we physically feel a lot of things in our bodies. Um, we store a lot of things in our bodies and we store a lot of emotions and a lot of trauma um, and a lot of wisdom and intelligence that we have learned throughout the years that we've been here. And even some stuff that we might have brought in from other lifetimes, we have stored within our physical body. And our physical body gives us information and communicates to us. And sometimes it's really easy when we can figure it out. You get pain in your knee. You know that there's something going on in your knee. It may be physical, it may be emotional, it may be a fear. Um, it could be something that actually happened, like you you know, twisted your knee, tore your ACL, anything like that. Like your body saying, okay, you have pain. There is something going on here. That pain also talks to you and it communicates to you if you give your chance to a self a chance to listen to it. So years ago, I had a mentor and I've talked about Dr. Teresa Butte uh, and she's still a mentor. I just don't see her as often anymore, but she, she used to tell me, listen to your pain. Your pain is telling you something. Your body has all this information. It's, it's telling you, it's guiding you. And a part of me knew this. So when she said it, I wasn't like, oh, this is crazy. What is she talking about? There was a part of me that already knew and understood this. And I could go back and I could, I could uh, list different things after she said that that made sense to me. 
One, I was never somebody that was big on taking pain medicine. Even if it was Tylenol, never big on taking pain medicine. If you've ever heard me talk about my story about my knee replacement, I only took Tylenol after my knee replacement and I stopped taking it within a few a few months and it was very sporadic. And I'm not saying that because I want to say, oh, I'm, I'm this and I'm better. No, I'm saying that because it's part of my journey. And the reason why intuitively I was doing this is because I wanted to have this connection with this new knee. Yes, it would give me pain, but if I if I took the pain medicine and I overdid it, I didn't know because I was blocking the pain with the pain medicine. So if I didn't take a pain medicine and I started to overdo it, then my pain my knee would communicate. There's a flaw in my prop my flaw in there for me though. I built up a high tolerance for pain. So then my body reacted a different way. And what would happen is my blood pressure would drop and I'd feel like I'm gonna faint because I was in so much pain, but I didn't know it. So even though that kind of like, yeah, kind of quote unquote failed, if you wanna call it, um, but my body gave me another indicator to go by. And it's about listening to your body. And it really freaked out the PT at the time, but I wasn't freaked out because I know my body communicates me in, in strange things. But let me go back before that. Even growing up, um, even uh, growing up, I always had a re- resistance to wanting to take medication, especially when it came to pain medication. And one of the reasons is I already, without knowing, I knew, without knowing, I knew that it was communicating something to me. And so when I heard it again and it was reinforced and reinforced, I begin to listen more and more and deeper and deeper. Even have conversations with the pain and what was going on. And I, and it has helped me to learn more and more about my body. And it has helped me as a healer to help all of you because as you may know, I'm, I'm an empath and I say that as it's a tool for me. Being an empath is a tool. Um, as, as the empath, the way that I feel is I feel other people's pain. And so when I'm working with somebody, I connect energetically, their pain shows up physically in my body. My body communicates to me that the pain is happening. And how do I know it's not mine? Because it wasn't there before. It wasn't there before. And I've had years of years of years of learning this the hard way. Because I walked around years wide open not knowing this because I was not ready to tap into my psychic senses, into my abilities that I have, just like maybe some of you have. And I went wide open. So I would sit down next to somebody or go to work and I would physically take on their pain and not recognize it as theirs. I would recognize it as mine. And then I would go to the doctor after a while because it wasn't going away. And they could never figure out what was going on because they couldn't find anything because the pain was not mine, it was somebody else's. But that is a tool that helps me to help you when we're energetically working together because I'm giving information in my physical body about what's going on in you. And that helps me understand. And then I also understand the different feelings in my physical body and what they mean because I've built up this relationship of talking to my body and understanding. So when I get a sharp pain, that might mean something different than when I get a dull pain or the way that I breathe is a different communicator to me, the different ways that you breathe. So one type of breathing and tightness in my chest might be anxiety. Another tightness and breathing in my chest done slightly different could be grief. These are all different indicators. And when I'm working with a client or I tap into somebody's energy, 
that is close to me because I've gotten permission and I did this, I can pick up on these things and then I translate that into what it, what it means. And I've had this from years of experience. Do I expect everybody to just tap in and start doing it? It's taking me a while to understand this and to work with this, but you can do it. You can understand what's going on in your body. I'm not saying necessarily understand things that you are feeling from other people, which I do believe you can do, uh, but that might come down the road a little bit. But I'm talking about within you. When these things happen within you, you can start to build and understand what they're saying. It's a communication. It's an information. <clears throat> Pardon me. So why are we talking about this? Because it's really important. We see signs all the time. Right? We talk about numbers, we talk about pennies, nickels on the ground, unicorns or butterflies that we see or colors that we see. And we see these signs and we're like, oh my God, I'm getting these signs. Well, you guess what? You're getting those signs in your physical body as well. Sometimes it's, we talk about it as a gut feeling, but these signs are important. So... One of the things I also did, and we're going to jump back and forth and back and forth, but one of these things that I also did uh, as part of my journey is when I didn't want to do something, um, not under understanding why I didn't want to do something, I would make myself physically sick. What do you mean? I would make myself physically sick, whether I would somehow managed to manifest a headache, stomach issues, coughing, vomiting, um, weird sensations through my body where I felt disoriented. No medical doctor, and I had gone to many when I was going through this, could explain these things. But I began to notice a pattern. And I don't know if anybody else began to notice the pattern before me or after me, but I noticed the pattern and I could see it. And sometimes it still happens today when I don't listen to my intuition and don't listen to what my body's telling me. And if I was going into an uncomfortable situation, I would make myself physically sick because I didn't want to go into the situation. Um, if... And, and some of these things were because I didn't put up boundaries. Some of these things is because I didn't know how to say no. I didn't want to do that. Um, and some of these things that were just pressures that were put on me. So I went to school for architecture. I love architecture. I am fascinated about it. I grew up with it. My father's an architect. I spent many years with him on job sites and studying architecture and building models and reading blueprints and all that stuff. And I absolutely love it. I find buildings absolutely fascinating. And um, I always, always, always wanted to be an architect and I always wanted to go to school for architecture. My drawing teacher, my technical drawing teacher used to say, no, you're gonna be a teacher which I find myself, I'm a teacher, but in a different way than at that age I perceived it to be. But I wanted to go to school for architecture. And I went to school for architecture. And going to school for architecture, you have to have art classes. And I am an artist. Um, and I learned a lot about art but I also did a lot of comparison to my work and other work because it was different, but different doesn't mean bad or good. It's just different. Um, and the message that is trying to be conveyed um, in the art and learning art is subjective, it still doesn't always make it easy when people are standing there tearing apart your art, which brings me to design classes. And I went to school for design. And I would spend hours, all-nighters, building these designs. Some of them, yeah, I mean, it's learning. You can learn. There's, there's a lot to learn. Um, I, back then, was a lot more realistic 
in in things. So um, thinking so crazy about buildings, not necessarily. Well, let me let me frame. That was my thought process. Thinking so crazy or out of the box in building something um, wasn't necessarily my thing. It was more about uh, functionality and being more realistic and practical, but also making it a beautiful space. And if I could, you know, bring in some earth elements, um, that would be awesome. Well, in design school, a lot of the times they want you to think so abstract and outside of the box, almost to the point where these things would never actually be designed in the world, but they wanted you to do those things. And, and, um, but anyway, you would spend countless, countless hours putting drawings, renderings, uh, models, all these different things together. And some projects would be small and some projects you would have working all year long. So you had to get some stuff done by midterm then other stuff during finals. I know this is a long story, but the point of the story was, is in these different parts, like your midterms, your midterm in design was going up against a panel of people, the teacher and whomever the teacher wanted to bring in. And some, and the students were open to add to this and they would critique your work. Most of the critiquing was tearing it apart, was telling you everything that you have done wrong. At least that's how I heard it. If there was anything that says it was good, it was overshadowed about everything that they tore apart and thought that was wrong. And sometimes it was conflicting between different, what one person might have liked, the another person didn't like, and then it just made it even worse. And being judged in front of all these people. Now, imagine you are a 20 some year old, 19, 20, 21, however, going through this as you're still discovering yourself and who you are. And I wasn't out yet because I haven't, I hadn't figured out who I was. Um, and just day after day or time after time, I should say, because even when you went to classes, there was still these critiques. And I know a lot of it was to make you better, but it wasn't always done in a productive way. And um, it's part of life, I guess. It's part of learning. I learned a lot from that, but I hated it. It's ultimately what turned me away, part of what turned me away. From architecture, among other things, I'm much more of a people person than sitting in the there and I want to bring my ideas forward. But sitting through that was horrible. And I can list the amount of things that physically has happened to myself. Whether I was sick, I had my gallbladder out. Uh, no reason ever given to me as to why. Um, I was having the issue, uh, but I've also cut myself numerous times, um, injured myself, and usually it was always my right hand, right hand, it makes it hard to do that. And back there, you could say, oh, it was accident prone, it was this, um, it was what you were eating, you know, that young, really don't need to have your gallbladder out, but I would make myself physically sick because you needed an excuse. I needed an excuse not to show up for class. I needed an excuse not to stand in front of my peers and being torn about. Instead of standing up for myself, I made excuses because if I made excuses, I was sick, but I'm not the type of person to say I'm just sick. I actually physically had to make myself sick. But all of this was also a sign, a sign. And the reason why I bring this, this up is because one of the people that recently talked to me said that they were doing the same. And it was also in that moment where I was like, you're doing the same. Well, your body's telling you something. Something's not aligned. Something is not correct. Uh, and 
there's a lot of things for me back there that was not aligned uh, with what I should be doing with myself, uh, with the environment I was within, and my body was giving me all this information. Now when I find it happening, I recognize it a lot faster and I don't allow it to go that way. But if you find yourself getting sick and and when I work with people and they tell me, well, this, I keep getting headaches, we I want to dive deeper into it. Not just tapping into the energy and picking up, but I also want you to become aware of it. When are the headaches happening? Where are they happening? Is it a certain day of the week? Is it a certain time of the month? Is it... Um, When you have big presentation, is it because you were up all night and didn't sleep? What were you eating? What were you drinking? Become aware of these things because it's all information. So your body is giving you a headache and now it's your time to investigate and be curious about what's going on. So over years of practice, I know these headaches come this time I get these headaches, I wake up with those headaches, almost feel like hangover headaches. You know what I didn't do? I didn't drink enough water. I get, my friend calls me water sensitive. If I don't drink enough water, I get a headache. I'll take a pause and drink water. Um, Water sensitive. It is information, tabbing into it. And you can dive even more into that information about these things when you start to learn also about your chakra system not being expert about it but like learning it gives you more insight and information when you learn what different meanings of joints I talked about anger not too long ago somebody said said to me uh, anger comes from your liver yes Anger and your liver are connected. So if you're having some liver issues, what are you angry about? What anger is stored within you? So there's all this information in there, in your body, that it talks to you about. And it could be something is not right. I got to go to the doctor. It's giving you big warning signs to do that. I'm not anti-doctor, just so you know. Um, I am not at all. I believe there should be a balance in that. Um, But you also have to be your own advocator when it comes to it. And I've had to be my own advocator. Um, When I I had an issue with my, my elbow, I had a doctor tell me all about what my problem with my elbow was without even touching my arm. And in that moment, it wasn't just my elbow. My body was telling me all this information like, no, this guy is not right. Don't listen to him. Don't come back to him again. But you have to be your own advocator in this and use your voice. And a lot of the things that physically making myself is learning to be my own advocator and learning to use my voice and also recognizing that if I'm physically making myself sick, there's something I don't want to do. And why? What is the reason behind it? Or it's not aligned with me. It's not right. So I was working with a, with a, a client and they said to me, um, you know, when I do... Right before I go to do this, I get this feeling. It makes me sick to my stomach. And I said, well, is it a good sick to your stomach? It kind of sounds strange, right? But I said, okay, if you do this instead of that, how do you feel? Well, doing this, I don't get all those feelings. But doing this, I get all those feelings. And I'm like, okay, so that sounds like your body is kind of telling you what what direction to go, what not, 
not to do. Um, and then, but when I do this, I get a lot of discomfort. Okay, that is also physical discomfort and being there is also a sign. It's your body saying, okay, their discomfort. If I sit in this discomfort, what is, how's that going to help me? What am I going to learn? Can I sit in the discomfort and have it talk to me so it can understand? Is this, dis this discomfort is more than a physical discomfort. There's a discomfort going on outside. And where is that discomfort? showing up in my life where am i uncomfortable in my life because it's not just about this physical being that we are in it's so much more than that so it gives you signs your body gives you signs uh some people will say the hair the all my hair is standing up well what does that mean to you you hear that saying, the hair in the back of my neck, is that's a warning sign. But like if the hair on your arms are up and tingling, what does that mean to you? What it means to you, what it means to me, that's totally different. Like I said, I've had years to understand my body and what the signs are telling me. Um, doesn't mean I always get them right because you don't always want to listen to what the signs are, right? But they're indications. So when you see like that butterfly and you're like, transformation or that hummingbird and you're like oh that's this person talking to me or I find a nickel oh, that's my my uncle reaching out to me it's not just that there's a whole physical part that's happening with you and happening with your being now if I turn around and I've seen uh, a nickel and I said oh that's my aunt and then all of a sudden I get this like icky nicks in my throat that's not a line that's not right but if I said, oh, that's my uncle and my body is more, I don't know, alive, then that is to me another indicator. So it helps you understand your intuition, helps you understand the signs and also gives you signs. So if I'm thinking about doing something that's going against my beliefs in what I know to be true for me. So me knowing that I'm, I'm here to help all of you um, me knowing that I am to be a teacher and to, to spread love and help heal this world by spreading love. I know that in my whole entire being. Now, if I turn around and, and I let my brain kick in and say, you know what, this is taking longer than I need to, need to be taking and um, maybe I should be looking for a job or relocating or doing like this. And then I start to feel like, I don't know, the insides of me are starting to like die or go into myself. That's a sign that that thinking, that thinking, it's coming from here, not here. And it's not aligned with what my mission is. So I want you to recognize that when you feel that yuckiness in you. Okay. When you are getting in your head and you're having your head run away and you physically start to feel ill, sick in whatever way, or that feeling you get is like, ugh, yuck, gross. Um, you get this crampiness in your stomach, uh, achiness in your, your hips or whatever it is, whatever comes up to you, that is a sign. That is your intuitive body saying to you, screaming at you, that is not the right path. That is not the right path. So listen to your, your body. It has intelligence. You know, if you're somebody that works out all the time, and I, I've talked about my journey about working out and I'm constantly always navigating that because I seem to physically get, get hurt when I start to work out. So it's finding the right balance and finding the right activities that work for me. But if you are somebody that's always done this workout, 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 this is your workout. You only know how to go strong. You only know how to go hard. 
And your body is saying the next day, oh my God, why'd you do that to me? And it's not like, oh yeah, my muscles are like sore and I had a good workout. It's like, oh my God, what did you do to me? I don't even have the energy to move today. You might want to think about rethinking your workout. And that workout that you've always done may not be right for you anymore for many different reasons. And it's not just about getting older. It's about what is going on. And and maybe your body's always screamed at you, but now you have more body intelligence to understand that that screaming has something, a message for you. So pay attention to, to your to you physically how you feel where you get that that gut feeling where you're just don't like yeah that's just the right thing or where you get that gut feeling you're like ooh, this is like yuck it doesn't feel right your body is telling you something your hair standing up your body is telling you you get chills your body is telling you something you have pain on on in your hips your body is telling you something Listen to your body. Begin to investigate and be curious and have conversation. I have gone into into areas of my body that have been hurting and have conversations to uncover the message of what it's coming to. You're like, it's, it's like when we talk about communicating with your angels, your ancestors, your loved ones. People are like, what do you do? How do I talk to my higher self? You have a conversation, just like I'm talking with you today. Just like you're talking with your your friends. You're having a conversation. In the conversation, hopefully you're having a conversation. It's not a one-sided conversation, but you're having this conversation. You're asking Um, a question, you're exchanging ideas, you're telling them about a journey in your life, a story, Um, you're learning something about yourself, you're learning something about them, whether you recognize it in that moment or not. You do the same thing when you want to talk to angels, when you want to talk to the ancestors, you talk to them, you have conversations, you call in your grandmother energy and you ask your grandmother, just like if she was sitting there right in front of you, everything you want to want to ask her and listen, because she's going to tell you everything. If you allow yourself to listen with your heart, your body will do the same thing. The pain in your knee, the pain in your hip, the pain in your back, the aches and pain, take the time and have that conversation and go in there. What you may uncover is something you might not expect at all. You might uncover a story from your childhood that has been stored in your physical body. Like I said in the beginning, your body retains information. It stores it. It could be traumas. It could be stories. It could be many things. And when you sit there and you have this conversation with your physical body, you'll start to be curious and understand and it'll enlighten you. It'll enlighten you just, just like going within and talking spirit. And really, that's what you're doing. But you're doing it with your physical body. It's going to enlighten you. So pay attention to it. Become aware of it. And when you, when you are um, really thinking and contemplating, I know... Some people like to do lists and everything. I actually watched, um, I wasn't feeling good last week myself. And I was watching some TV as I like laid on the couch and tried to get energy to actually do anything. Um, And I was watching a TV show and the person had to come up and make this decision. And they, she couldn't make the decision. She had no idea which way to go. And... Her mom walked her through it and, and in a way to help her make the decision. And so her mom told her to sit down and start paying attention to your, her breath. I don't remember the exact, I was kind of like not fully present, but it was the idea of paying attention to your breath. 
going into your heart, right? And then asking the question. If I told you this was the right decision, I want you to feel what your body is saying, paying attention to your body. Now, if I told you this was the right decision, I want you to pay attention to your body and how you're feeling. And then after they went through that exercise, so when I said this, how were you feeling? And when I said this, how were you feeling? There's a distinguish. So in that moment, what they did in that show, which I thought was, it's really interesting when you see these things um, now coming through, you know, our media in a way, is they, in that moment when you're doing this exercise, you're tapping into your heart, you're getting out of your head and you're tapping into your spiritual intelligence. And that spiritual intelligence is going to show up in a lot of ways. And it's going to show up in your physical intelligence, in, in your body, giving you information. So you may hear something and you may hear, this is, yes, this is the right path or no, this is the wrong path. But if you are not sure and you want to get further confirmation, notice how you're physically feeling. Or you may know in your whole being that this is the right way and this is the wrong way or whatever. But you're also getting reassurance from your physical body if you just take a moment and notice. We are all one. We are all working as one. Our physical body, energetic body, spiritual body, emotional body is all one within us and is all working for the same common goal. And they're going to speak to you in a way you're going to understand it. Just like when we talk about your non-physical gifts and if you are somebody that's a world traveler, they're going to speak to you that way. If you're somebody that watches cartoons, they're going to speak to you that way because it's a way that you're going to understand it. So how your physical body speaks to you and the information and intelligence that it's an in intuitive information it is communicating to you, it's going to speak to you in a way you are going to hear it and going to know it. And so you're going to get confirmation. Spirit doesn't just speak to you in one way. That's where you get, like I said, I had this information and then I got confirmation and confirmation and confirmation. This is the right topic. This is what you should be talking about. You're going to get information like that. It's going to be repetitive. And you, oh, you, you probably heard the joke about, um, which really isn't a joke, but it's played as a joke how, you know, the guy asked for help. And it showed up this way. And then a guy asked for still praying for help and it showed up this way. And and then three times and then all of a sudden he's in, in the at the gates with Jesus and he said, I asked for help. Why didn't you send it? And Jesus is like, I, I sent this, I sent this, I sent this, and you ignored it. Or God, whatever the 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 whole idea of that whole thing is it's the same thing. Spirit is going to communicate. Your higher self is going to communicate. God, Jesus, angels, ancestors, they're all going to communicate to you over and over again. Information. And, you, and the more you attune to the different ways they're going to communicate to you, the more quicker you'll be able to figure it out. So listen to your body. It is your physical body is a vessel of information and wisdom and knowledge, and it's so intuitive and you do things so naturally you don't even realize it. So be a little bit more intentional with what you're doing. Be more intentional in becoming aware of things. So when you become aware, be intentional, okay, where is this happening? 
Why is this happening? And listen, your physical body is freaking amazing. It tells you so much information. Sometimes we like to ignore the information, but it has so much wisdom to offer. And my recommendation is listen to wisdom. If you're somebody that will listen to the wise words of people that have come before you, whether they've been presidential, activists, uh, apostles, gods, goddesses, Jesus, then why wouldn't you listen to the wisdom in your body? It's there. It's been with you your whole life. It has so much information. It has so many records in it for you to listen to. Records of time, places, way you feel, how you feel, what makes you feel happy, what makes you feel sad, what brings you joy, what brings you happiness. It'll give you tools of how to release anger. Your body is freaking amazing. So give your body the credit it's due and take care of it because it's such a sacred um, vessel for you to navigate physically in this human life. And, you know, it has so much to give it. Make sure you give your body back some of that great energy. Drink your water. Notice, uh, when foods and stuff are not aligning with you and, uh, listen to the wisdom it has to offer. So your body has intelligence your body is intuitive your body has so much knowledge spend time with it get to know it even more you may think you know it but believe me you can know it even more and listen when it is speaking to you allow it to speak to you it doesn't have to get loud for you to hear it It only has to get loud because you're not listening to it i hope this brings you some insight, some tools, some information that you can take with you and move it forward. I hope you spend time listening to your body so you can start to navigate life as you move through it because it's going to help you along the way. And I hope you go out and find ways to spread love in this world. The only way we are going to change the world is by focusing on ourselves, bringing more love to ourselves so that we can spread more love outward into this world. So go out and spread some love in this world today. I am sending all my love to you. Until next time, bye-bye for now.